Kevin Cleary here with just a quick little comparison discussion between these two Wii knives. Uh, a couple of different interesting things I want to talk with you guys about. Yeah, Dad, yeah, it's gonna be in the backyard. What? What do you mean? I'm moving like your black flashing light. Oh my goodness! What do you think it is? Oh no! It looks so weird. Hold on. Oh, oh Joel, buddy, what happened? Uh, is it morning? What the heck? Is there yeah. anything in the backyard? There's a big dead stuff of grass. What? What the heck? Go check it out, buddy. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe to go in the backyard. Is that okay, let's see what this is. Buddy, go check it out. What? I found this knife right there. What? Whoa, what is this? Man, we should check this thing out. Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, hope you enjoyed that little bit of an intro there. Uh, look, we've got this interesting knife that, you know, if Xenomorphs carried a folding knife, I suppose this would be the knife. This is the Wii Knives Isham Designed Arrakis. I probably didn't even just say uh, an Isham design. I, I do enjoy Elijah's work quite a bit. Uh, when I ran into him at Blade, the first thing I said to him was like, dude, I really love your designs. He said, dude, I really like your videos. Uh, we sort of chatted about some different things and then carried on, but uh, he definitely has an aesthetic that is really recognizable right away. So I probably don't even need to say uh, Isham design, but that's what we are dealing with here. Uh, and of course, this is one of the, the more elaborate Wii knives that are out there. This is the one, by the way, that was famously offered on uh, Mass Drop for <laughs> more than retail. So, you know, Mass Drop, normally they're known for uh, offering a good price on something because they they're going to guarantee a certain number of sales and uh, that's kind of what we look for that look to them for but they listed this knife it may have been a different color variation i'm not 100 percent sure but uh they listed this knife i think for like 335 and then all the retailers had it for like 330 or something like that so it was kind of a fail on their part anyway if you want to save yourself some money on this knife go to white mountain knives use my discount code sharp stuff and save yourself 10 percent as of recording this video they had some in stock but i feel like every time i mention that a knife is in stock they they immediately sell out. So I don't know what, I'm just cursing it every time I mention it, but uh, I'm going to mention it anyway. So go over to White Mountain Knives, use my discount code, to save 10%. They've got a bunch of other Wii Knives stuff and, and lots of good stuff there. So even if these are gone, there's lots of stuff you can save yourself 10% on that's worthwhile. Uh, so let's take a quick look at this knife. I'll give you a quick rundown on the materials and the construction and stuff like that. So up front, we've got this satin blade. This is available in a couple of variations. I think you can do like DLC on the flats here. Uh, you guys know if you've been watching this channel for more than five minutes that I'm a fan of satin blades, and so that's what we went with. Uh, we have, of course, typical Wii action, ceramic bearings, uh, good detent. Um, by the way, M390 on that blade, if I didn't mention that, and I guess I didn't. Let's see if I can show you. Focus. You can just barely make out the M390 there. Okay, so M390, and then we have this really interesting handle, okay? You can see back here, by the way, Isham Design, and what they've done is they've sort of made a an integral-ish backspacer and then put sort of titanium overlays or extensions on it. So it's it's partially milled like an integral would be, and then it's partially built like a, a knife with scales and a backspacer it would be. So kind of an interesting way of doing this. And I'll be interested, I'll be curious, I guess, to see what Wii Knives is able to do with this in the future. It functions more like a liner lock or a bolster lock than a frame lock, okay, you can see this part of the frame is exposed here, that's the lock bar, and then it's sitting under this uh, this little overlay. So really kind of cool. And of course, the, the intricacy of this is one of the things that makes it so interesting. There's lots of different layers here and lots of milling going on uh, in the blade itself and in the handle. So very, very cool, multifaceted 
uh, design that, and this is one of the things that is always a little bit surprising for me with Isham. He tends to, you know, he's got this knife, and this I would call an art knife. Okay, this is almost this almost is exclusively a piece of sculpture, more so than a folding knife. But it actually is reasonably comfortable in hand and moderately functional as a folding knife. Is it the most practical thing out there? Like, cause this could, can this compare to a Rat Model 1? Well, of course not, okay? But for what it is, okay, it barely looks like a knife at all, and yet it actually does function uh, to some degree. So we've got a, a quick handle on sort of what the, what's going on here in terms of uh, the build. Let's give you a quick rundown on size, and then I'll give you my initial thoughts. So eight inches overall, three and a half inch blade, nine, or wow, four and nine sixteenths on the handle. So just a little over four and a half inches. So the blade to handle ratio is exceptional here. Uh, grip area, now that's something interesting. So you can see um, this knife is a little similar to some of the other Isham designs in that the sort of the blade relationship to the handle is sort of canted. Now if I hold it here, which is sort of the standard grip, um, it's not very good. I don't find this very functional. However, if I move up here in a normal, in a saber grip, then it's very, very nice. And it's, it, I would say this knife, and you know, if, if Elijah, you're watching this, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say this knife is designed to be held in this kind of a saber grip with this choked up position into that finger choil and your thumb resting in that divot in the back of the blade. To me, that just seems like what he was going for here. Now, is this a practical cutting tool? And am I going to say, you know, instead of, I don't know, instead of a, a Wee Knife 037, actually, let me, uh, this will make an interesting comparison. Uh, so probably the most practical, useful Wee Knife in existence, and then something that is not so practical and, and much less useful. Okay, so kind of a neat contrast those create, and I think I may do a video discussing that whole, you know, function versus form uh, as displayed in those two knives, which are sort of opposite end of the spectrum, but from one company. Okay, um, so look. Uh, my overall thoughts on this is, yeah, this is not an EDC blade, right? If you're watching this thinking, well, I was going to buy a Spyderco Tenacious or a Map Rat Model 1, but maybe I'll consider this. No, no, that's not, <laughs> okay? Uh, it's not a hard-use blade. It's not, it's, this is a, a piece of functional artwork. This is something you buy because you're a collector, because you're an enthusiast, because you think it's one of the coolest looking things out there. Uh, that's why you buy something like this, okay? You don't buy this to, I don't know, take out hunting in the woods or to carry as a, a self-defense option. This is not that. Okay, this is more of a, a collection piece. This is more of an art piece. And in that role, it is very, very cool, right? This is really, really interesting. And I will say, I've shown a few friends this knife and they're like, what in the world? Is that even a knife? <laughs> okay, so uh, if you want to impress your friends and take good, good pictures on Instagram, if you're an enthusiast of just extremely exceptional construction and uh, just want to be blown away by the quality of the machining, then yeah, this is a knife for you. Uh, if you just want a nice knife, you know, there's some, there are tons of nice Wii knives out there. There's a 037 that I just showed you. Uh, the Mass Drop Keen is exceptional. The, the Crux, again, is exceptional. Both, both highly functional, uh, more, you know, plain Jane, you know, work-oriented folders from Wii. So those would be the options to look at if that's what you're looking for. But if you want something really special and unique and interesting, this is a great option. Okay, so there's my first impression. I will do a full review on this. I hope you guys are, you know, I'd love to hear your comments down below. Just what you think of this knife and, and does it appeal to you? Or is this something you could just never imagine even thinking about owning or buying? Uh, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to use that link and go over and check out White Mountain Knives. Justin does a lot for the channel and I really appreciate that. So uh, when you guys use that link, it reminds him that, uh, hey, Kevin is, is making mention of you and, and we as viewers appreciate that as well. There you go, guys. We'll talk to you soon.